Um, my name is uh, Gustavo Silva, and well, I'm going to present um, the things I'm going to present here are um, the result of the work of a, of a bunch of people, so uh, not only me. So um, um, my work in the current community has always been supported by the Linux Foundation, and in recent years also by Google. So, uh, well, my appreciation to those organizations for that. Um, Okay, well, for those that don't know me, um, I've been doing uh, upstream kernel development uh, for the last seven years. Um, I've been mostly focused on security. And I collaborate with the Kernel Self-Protection Project, which is uh, part of the Google Open Source Security team uh, in the kernel division. Uh, this is the agenda for today. Um, I'm going to go quickly uh, through an introduction uh, talking a little bit about Arrays in C, and uh, just so we all are on the same page, I'm going to explain a little bit about training arrays and flexible arrays. Then we are going to jump into the main part of this presentation, which is uh, about gain inbounds checking on trailing arrays. And well, all the, all the problems and implications of this work. Okay, well, this is uh, probably the most simple uh, declaration of an array in the C language. Uh, here we have a happy array, uh, Happy Array is going, to, um, uh, is going to hold 10 elements of type integer. And, well, um, arrays are uh, quite useful uh, in software engineering because, well, it's quite useful to have a, um, a consecutive sequence of objects of the same time that we can use to iterate over them or to copy or read data from them at once, right? The problem with arrays is that the language doesn't enforce the boundaries uh, of these objects, so it is always up to the developers to, uh, to, to take care of that, right? Otherwise, well, we are going to land into what I like to call the land of possibilities, which is, of course, undefined behavior. And, well, this is an example of a miserable array, so just for completeness. <laughs> Okay, now trailing arrays, well, a trailing array is merely uh, an array that is going to be at the end of a structure, right? So in this case, uh, we have happy array uh, as a trailing array because it's at the bottom of a struct trailing. Okay, now, sometimes we need to, we are not uh, going to be able to know the total size of our arrays at compile time. So we are going to need, to, uh, we're, we're going to use uh, variable length objects for that purpose. So in the case we don't know the size of our arrays, uh, we can declare this type of objects. Uh, so the size of these objects are going to be determined at runtime. Um, here is an example of a flexible structure in a flexible array. Uh, a flexible array, well, is merely an array which size is going to be determined uh, at runtime. And a flexible structure is merely a structure that contains a flexible array as a trailing array. Okay, um, currently we have uh, three different ways to declare these types of objects. Uh, that's been problematic, so we classify those into two main categories. One of them is what we call fake flexible arrays. And in this category we have uh, one element arrays and zero length arrays. Uh, these are examples of uh, fake flexible structures. Fake flex one contains uh, a, a one element array that at runtime is going to be used as a variable length object. And we say, we say that this object is fake because, well, at compile time, we are telling the compiler that this object, its size is going to be the size of one element. And to the, uh, to your, uh, to your right, yeah, in my right too. Um, is we have a fake flexible structure with a zero length array. Okay, now the other category is uh, are the true flexible arrays. So the true flexible arrays were introduced in C99, and they were called uh, flexible array members. So here we have an example of that. Um, usually, when we use a flexible array member we are also going to include in, this, in the containing structure a member that we are going to use as the counter of the total number of items our array is going to contain at runtime. So in this case, uh, count is that counter, and well, we have our fake, our, our true flexible array. 
Okay, so yeah, uh, the problem uh, is that we have three different ways to declare this type of objects. Um, let's start with, uh, with the problems with one element arrays. These types of arrays are prone to uh, off by one uh, issues. Uh, this is sometimes people uh, allocate um, one, to, one too many items when they are uh, allocating dynamic memory for, for this type of arrays. Uh, sometimes uh, people have gotten to use, uh, to use these type of uh, objects as variable length objects that sometimes they, uh, they actually uh, forget that they need to use an extra item in their structure. So sometimes they introduce box because they are uh, subtracting one from the counter, uh, as in this example, as in the example uh, at the bottom, when they are trying to allocate the total size for the structure and the total number of the elements in, in the array. The reason why um, we need to subtract one from the counter is because, well, the size of, uh, of, that, of that one element is already included uh, in size of a star p, right? So this is problematic because developers need to uh, be acutely aware at all times uh, that they are carrying within this fake flex structure uh, that, extra, that extra size of this array. So that extra size becomes spurious, and, uh, and well, it opens the door for all sorts of problems. So just here at the bottom, I have an example uh, just how people um, used to calculate the location for these arrays. And well, we are updating the counter with the total number of the items. Right? Okay, another problem is, well, you may know that we've been trying to enable array bounds for more than, more, than, more than a couple of years now. Uh, we have run into a lot of false positives. We have run into issues with the compiler too, so that's been delaying that work. But in this case, well, uh, we also, um, array bounds reports uh, false positives when it is used with uh, one element arrays. How array bounds works is that, well, it, it determines the range of I index values that, uh, that we are going to use uh, to access our array. So in this case, well, uh, the only valid index for this array is going to be zero. So any other index is going to be uh, uh, invalid. And well, this is an example of the warning you are going to see if you were to, uh, to run into, into one of these issues. OK, now let's move on with zero length arrays. Um, the problem with those arrays is that they are not part of the language. They were included as an extension uh, sort of as a remediation for the lack of a proper way to declaring variable length objects, right? So at the time, people were already uh, using um, one element arrays. So we needed like a, a different, another alternative. And they are slightly less problematic, but, but still, uh, sometimes uh, I've, I have found cases in the, in the kernel code where people is applying the size of operator to the array and, well, this operation is going to result in zero. And they were using this result to calculate other things. So, so that's, I don't think that was intentional. So that's usually a bug. And of course, well, in the case of, uh, I'm sorry, in the case of uh, zero length arrays, we don't need to subtract anything from, from the counter because, well, obviously, uh, the size of a zero length array uh, doesn't contribute to the size of the container structure, except for uh, in the cases that uh, we, need to, we, we are going to see some padding. OK, so the landing possibilities. Again, um, I was doing some work in the kernel. Uh, I was doing some uh, stroke size transformations. And then I ran into this commit. What is going on here is that, well, uh, you can see this commit introduced a new member to, to this uh, structure. The problem is that that member is just after a zero length array. That might not be the problem, uh, but the, the thing is that um, this zero length array, a runtime, is actually being used as a variable length object. So that's the issue. That's, that's the problem. So um, this is a bug that we need to resolve. Uh, compilers cannot, uh, cannot detect these types of, uh, of issues. Uh, in the case of flexible array members, if we instead replace this zero length array with a flexible array member, now the compiler is going to enforce the behavior of having 
uh, the zero length array at the, the, the flexible array member at the bottom of the structure always. So that's the fix. Uh, the fix is transform this zero length array into a proper C99 flexible array member and place it at the bottom of the structure. So in the case that someone, el uh, someone else comes and made the same mistake, now the compiler is going to complain, and the compiler is going to help us detect these sorts of uh, issues uh, uh, before uh, people even submit their code, right? So that's, so that's great. Uh, we can consider this um, the kickoff of flexible array transformations in the kernel. Um, this was a moment when we realized uh, the importance of addressing these issues in, in the code base. So uh, this bug was introduced in 2011 and was fixed uh, eight, la eight years later. Okay, another case of undefined behavior, now this case, now um, with one element arrays. This case is interesting because uh, what is going on here is that um, this structure uh, used to contain, used to have uh, an array of 18 items, right? And here, well, it is obvious uh, uh, that, the, that the people, people wanted to transform this array into a flexible array member. But in this case, this is a fake flexible array member because what they did was instead of using a C99 flexible array member, they, they used a one element array. This is, uh, this is part of the commit. And well, yeah, this is a fake flexible array transformation. The other part of this commit is this piece of code. So this is where we have the issue. The problem is that we have an object just in the middle of this other structure of the type of this other structure that contains the one element array. And just after this object, we have more, more, more members, right? So it's the same problem. The moment uh, people use this array or, or declare uh, allocate memory for this object to be used uh, as, a, as a fake flexible array, we are going to run into undefined behavior again. So we need to fix this, uh, these problems too. And well, the fix, yeah, the fix is simple. Uh, just transform the one element array into a flexible array member and move the object to the bottom of that structure. By doing that, the flexible array member, BDS said, it's always going to end at the bottom of, uh, of any other structure, right? And well, I sent a, um, I sent a patch for this, and this uh, was introduced in 2017. It was fixed three years later. Yeah, a question? If it's taken this long for the bug to be noticed, can we just delete the driver instead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a possibility. <laughs> OK. OK, then something happened this, this Saturday. The next 10 of 12 uh, slides were not supposed to be part of this presentation. Uh, but well, I had to add them uh, at the last minute. I was reviewing my slides, and then I ran into, well, I, I, I just out of curiosity, I wanted to grab for, for this structure. Let's remember that this structure is the one that contains uh, an object of the type of a flexible structure, right? So I am grabbing for this structure. Okay, so what I found was this. Yeah, I was like, a, oh my God. <laughs> and, and yeah, we, we run into the same kind of issue. Uh, we have an instance of this structure that contains another structure that contains a flexible remember. Uh, but the thing is that after that, we have another object. So that again is a problem, that again is an issue. And probably the kernel code uh, has uh, a lot of these problems that we haven't uncovered uh, yet. And well, yeah, this translates into the, into, uh, into the thing uh, on the right. We have uh, our flexible, or C99 flexible array member, and we have our flexible structure. In this case, TX packet is our flexible structure. And that's within TXQ, and that's within double L info. But the problem, again, is that there is another object at the bottom, right? So this is wrong. 
And just out of curiosity, I wanted to, to see what, this is, uh, what, what, what was the type of this other object. And I found that this uh, is a structure full of function pointers. But what's great is that it has a cookie at the end. <laughs> OK, so, so yeah, well, I sent a patch. Uh, this is the fix. Obviously, just um, move the, the, that, that member to the middle of the structure, right? And by doing that, uh, again, we are going to end with in a flexible array member instead of ending uh, in another random object. And yeah, well, I sent this fix uh, this Saturday. Hopefully, it will appear in mainline soon. And well, this fix, uh, this was a six-year-old bug that I discovered this Saturday, just uh, thanks to kernel recipes. <laughs> and well, yeah, I sent the patch, and then Case replied with this, like, uh, yeah, well, nice find. So what is located with this other random compiler option? So how many of you are aware of this compiler option? <laughs> is this totally new for you? Really? OK, well, the thing is that this compiler option has not, yet, uh, has not been released yet in, in GCC. So, <laughs> so yeah, so I was like, uh, well, no, I know about that compiler option because we've been following their development, its development. But I didn't, I didn't uh, use uh, this option to, to, to catch that bug. Uh, so the thing is that, well, this has been in development. And uh, here are actually the patch for this option. It is coming in GCC 14. And it was implemented by, by King Xiao. King Xiao is a great uh, GCC developer. Uh, she's working for Oracle. And she's part of the kernel cell protection project. So she's doing a great, a great work. She's helping us to implement compiler options and attributes to, to, to harden the Linux kernel. OK, so yeah, this is, a pro this is the issue. This is exactly what this compiler option is supposed to, uh, to find. We want to detect those structures that contain uh, flexible array members, not at the end, but in the middle. And yeah, this is, that's, this is part of the, of the commit log. And then, and then I remember that uh, in May, uh, when this, uh, after this, this compiler option was, was implemented, uh, I was helping King to, uh, to test this. And, and, I, and I built my kernel with, uh, with this option enabled. And I even tweeted about it. And I found almost 60,000 warnings in the kernel. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, only 650 uh, are unique. <laughs> <laughs> only, only. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So then I was like, OK, I need to go back and review my build logs and see if this compiler option uh, finds this bug, right? That's what I did. And yeah, it turns out that, yeah, uh, it, it, uh, it actually caught that bug. But at the time, well, I, we were doing other stuff. And this, uh, this compiler option is, uh, is experimental. So we didn't even uh, pay attention to, uh, to the logs, right? I just saw the numbers. And I was like, oh my god, 60,000 warnings? Oh, rayos. OK, anyways, um, yeah, this compiler option detects this issue. So the next thing <laughs> that we are going to do is that we are going to try to enable this compiler option. It's probably is going to take us like uh, maybe a couple, another 10 editions of the kernel recipes conference. But, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it is a, a useful compiler option that, is, that detects dangerous bugs. So we need to do something about it. OK, another uh, other problems with, uh, with all these various and all these different ways to declare flexible arrays. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I, I like this title, The Tale of Sysof and the Three Trailing Arrays. OK, let's see what Sysof, uh, if we apply Sysof to a one element array, uh, what, what do we get? Well, the result of applying Sysof to a one element array is, of course, the size of that one element. If we apply Sysof to a zero length array, well, we are going to get zero because, well, that's the size of the object. In the case of a flexible array member, um, a flexible array member is an object of incomplete type. And let's remember that part of the type of, uh, of an object is its size. So if a declaration, uh, those objects uh, don't have a size, well, size of actually the code is not going to build, right? It's going to, uh, it's, it's, it's an error. And yeah, uh, we found um, 
this is another, uh, another problem because, well, again, people using all these different variants, uh, they need to be aware uh, what to expect when, when they are using uh, an, operate, uh, an operator uh, as, uh, as popular as SISO, right? So they, they need to be acutely aware of, of, this, of this type of issues. So yeah, in this case, ambiguity is the enemy. There, there, is no, uh, there, there is no good reason for us to continue using different variants of declaring the same object when clearly one of them is the one that is, uh, that is going to be less prone to problems, right? Okay, now let's get into um, the recent hardening of main copy and how, how hardening, how main copy behaves when we use a flexible array uh, to copy data. Okay, well, again, here we have our flexible structure, we have our flexible array, and we want to copy some source of data into flexible arrays, and that data is going to be of some size. Okay, this is a simplification of, uh, of a 45 version of main copy. The important uh, lines here are this. Destination size, source size. Internally, main copy uh, used to, uh, well, it was using this building uh, function, building object size. Well, what this building does is that, well, we pass a pointer and we are going to get the size of, of, the, of the object this pointer is pointing to. So internally, to detect some um, uh, buff buffer overflows or uh, overruns at compile time, we need to get the size uh, of, of the destination and the source through the use of this building function. And well, again, this is our example of how we are using. We are passing a pointer to, uh, to a flexible array member, right? So destination is going to contain a pointer to a flexible array member. In this case, size, so building object size is going to return minus one. This means that uh, it doesn't know how big our array is. And that's totally fine because, again, uh, our flexible array member is an object of incomplete type. So, so yeah, building object size has no way to, uh, to know how big our array is. So that's expected. That's okay. Yeah, again. Okay, well, yeah, what I was saying, it's an object of incomplete size, uh, only of, of incomplete type. So, okay, but what about fake flexible arrays? Those do have a size, right? Let's see what happens. Uh, what do you think is going to be the, the result? Remember, minus one is when, uh, when we don't know exactly how big our array is, but in this case, our one element array, we, we know exactly how big this array is at compactness, so what is going to be the result? Well, the result is going to be minus one, surprisingly. Then what happens if we apply, uh, if we use building object size to get the size of a zero length array? What we found out is that, again, we, we were getting minus one. And of course, the expected minus one for a flexible array member. And yeah, so that building uh, function is not able to, uh, to reason about the size of fake flexible arrays either. And let's remember again, uh, what are the results of size of, right? So here we are seeing uh, a lot of inconsistency, right? We would expect to see the same results for size of um, and for building object size, but uh, clearly that's not the case. Yeah, it can be a bit confusing. Okay, but now let's try to imagine the hypothetical case in which, in which we apply we use building object size to get the size of any trailing array. And by any trailing array, I mean it could be our happy, our happy array of size 10. Um, let's, see, let's see what happens. What we found out at the time is that this building function was not able to reason about the size of any trailing array. So it doesn't matter if it was a, a fake flexible array, a flexible array member, or an array of 100 items of char of, of, of type uh, integer. Yeah, we were getting um, uh, the same result. So yeah, that was really problematic. So what's going on? Let's see what's going on. 
So, well, in this scenario, main copy is not able to sanity check any trailing array. So yeah, this uh, could be a case for the go fix the compiler, right? But why exactly uh, is that this is happening? Why, why is that building object size is not able to reason about an object of a concrete size at compile time? Well, the historical reason is this. This is a piece of BSD uh, code. <laughs> What's going on here is that we have uh, SA data at compile time, SA data, uh, its size is going to be uh, 14 bytes. But in reality, at runtime, uh, SA data is going to behave as a flexible array member that can go all the way up to 255 bytes. So that's actually the reason why historically compilers, um, they decided not to, uh, not to give us the size of a trading array because we uh, probably we might want to use any trailing array as a variable length object. So this is part of the log. This is the issue. Uh, you can take a look if you want to see this, the whole story. But what it says is basically that yeah, yeah, we are we know that we are doing this and this uh, uh, this is on purpose. And well, that's problematic. So what do we do about it? If we don't fix this, uh, we are not going to gain bounce checking on any trailing array. In we cannot let that happen. OK, in the kernel side, what we can do is, well, we need to complete transforming uh, the fake flexible arrays into proper uh, C99 flexible array members. On the, uh, on the side of the compiler, well, we need to find a way to fix that building function. <laughs> Another option is to add uh, a new compiler option, in this case, uh, F strict flex arrays. So the good news is that, well, uh, now we have this, uh, this option. GCC and Clang have, uh, they both added this option. So we already have this option in uh, GCC 13 and Clang 16. That's the great news. But let's see the story. Okay, well, first let's see how this, how this works. Um, we can use different level values uh, with this compiler option. The level value zero well, is the default value, the default state. In this case, um, Everything is going to remain the same. Yeah, building object size is not going to be able to reason about the size of any trailing array. So any legacy code uh, will remain the same. Okay, but now with uh, level value one, now only fake flexible arrays and true C99 flexible array members are going to be treated as, as flexible arrays or, or as uh, objects of variable length uh, at runtime. In that case, we are going to still get in minus one for all those cases. And yeah, we have fixed, in this case, we are fixing uh, the trailing arrays part, and we are left with a fake flexible arrays. Okay, uh, level value two, what it does is, well, now we are fixing the one element array. Now only zero length arrays and C99 flexible array members are going to be treated as flexible arrays. So yeah, we are making progress. Okay, so now we are left with the case of the zero length arrays. So the zero length arrays are, are a whole other thing because, well, the next thing that we could do is, well, just add another uh, level value, which in this case will be three. And with that, uh, we could just uh, treat flexible array, true 99, C99 flexible array members as variable length objects and, and, and left aside the, the zero length uh, problem. The thing is that Clang was not convinced about this. And the thing is that Clang has this other compiler option, zero length array. So the argument at, at the moment was like, uh, well, if you don't want, uh, wh wh why, why are you still using zero length arrays? Just stop using them. Just use this, uh, this, uh, this compiler option, and you are going to get all the warnings, and you can go and fix all of them, right? Uh, the thing is that, well, uh, in the kernel, zero length arrays are not only used as fake flexible arrays. They are being used as markers. Sometimes people uh, add an object um, of size zero and name it start in the middle of the structure. And then after some members, they add another object of size zero and name it uh, n. So they are using zero length arrays to, uh, to mark areas of memory within structures. 
Uh, so yeah, people is creative. Um, and well, there are also cases in which under certain configurations, uh, we are going to end with an array of size zero, right? So yeah, the thing is that zero length arrays are here to stay, just uh, we don't want to use them as variable length objects. Fortunately, uh, we convinced uh, Clamp people, and now we have that option in both GCC and Clamp. So, so yeah, so now with this option, all trailing arrays of fixed size gain bounce checking. And well, that was, that was a great thing. And OK, well, but wait a moment. Uh, the, the, these options were implemented in the compiler, but uh, at the time, we were working on, on their addition in, uh, in the kernel. So yeah, when will we have nice thing? Yeah, we have uh, the option. Uh, Clang developers uh, agree on implementing all the level values we needed. But now what? Well, the great news is that this option is already enabled in mainline, and it is out in uh, 6.5. So that's been the result of uh, probably four years of work uh, between people from uh, uh, GCC developers, Clang developers, kernel developers. So it's been complex work, both technically and socially, but uh, well, we made uh, good progress already. Yeah, mega <laughs> Okay, well, this benefits also um, config UV sound uh, bounds and fortify source. And yeah, well, with this option enabled in mainline, now only C99 flexible array members are going to be treated as objects of variable length at runtime. So we we gain uh, bounce checking on trailing arrays of fixed size. Okay, yeah, but what about flexible array members? I mean, we also uh, it would be great if we can uh, sanity check those arrays, right? Okay, for that uh, we need a new attribute. In this case, an attribute that is going to be called counted by. Why do we need a new attribute? Well, as I as I said at the beginning. Flexible structures usually also contain a member that is going to be used as a counter for the total number of elements our array is going to contain at runtime. So we, needed, uh, we need an attribute to have a way to relate that member within the structure with our array in question, right? So the compiler now knows exactly where it has to go and take a look for the size of the array. Okay. That is coming soon. That is uh, GCC 14, uh, is coming in GCC 14 and Clang 18. So again, this was again a, a labor of, uh, of, of talking with people, explaining them uh, the need for these types of, uh, of attributes and convincing them of, uh, of, of, of the use uh, of those attributes. So this is kernel code. So this, uh, we already have everything in place, so the moment this attribute is released, the kernel is ready to, to use it. So yeah, that's great progress again. OK, so yeah, this is how uh, our flexible structures are going to look. So all the flexible structures that uh, are currently using uh, C99 flexible array members are, have been started to, to be tagged with counted by. The, over the last couple of weeks, case ha has been floating uh, the mailing list with, uh, with patches for this. And, uh, and well, I've been helping to, to review them. OK, yeah, but let's remember that I was explaining the case of building object size uh, in the 45 version of my copy. And I said that we were using, that, that building object size uh, was used in, in my copy, but now not anymore. What we are using now instead is building dynamic object size. Okay. We are using this other building to replace building object size because now that building function provides us with uh, coverage at runtime. So that increases the coverage of the bounce checking. And that, uh, that building uh, gets hints from a log size and will also get hints from counted by. So, so yeah, we needed to, to make that change. So now we can gain bounce checking on trailing arrays when, uh, when the counted by attribute is finally released um, in GCC and Clang. Okay, now let's get quickly into the case of API. 
we've been also, of course, uh, we've been replacing these fake flexible arrays across the whole kernel tree, and of course, we were going to run into a lot of cases in UAPI. So, at the time, what we were doing is uh, we were duplicating the whole, the whole members within a union. And, well, we were using uh, a flexible array member in the kernel, and the one element array was still being used in, in, in user space, right? So we, could, uh, we, we cannot change that. But now, the code looks much better. We now have a declare flex helper. So instead of, of duplicating um, the members, we just uh, add, a new, um, add a new flexible array and just keep, keep in its place the one element array. And again, using, by using this, uh, this helper, we are going to make the kernel to use this flexible array instead of the one element array. And well, yeah, the bad news is that um, when you apply size of to this flexible structure, uh, the size of this one element is going to be reflected in that, in that operation. We cannot get rid of that, at least in UAPI. Okay, so some conclusions. Um, well, uh, if a strict flex arrays uh, equal three is enabled in mainline, uh, we already have the attribute, the, uh, the counted by attribute that is just around the corner. We are just waiting for the for the compilers to release the the code. Um, again, Fortify source and UV sounds benefits from this behavior. And well, with the recent changes to main copy, uh, many of the vulnerabilities we have found over the last years uh, could have been prevented. And well, we continue finding uh, bugs in both in kernel space and in user space. And we are even helping uh, fix bugs in user space. Uh, not long ago, uh, someone from Android sent me an email and reported to me that I had changed it. I had, uh, I had transformed a zero-link array in UAPI. I transformed it into, into a flexible array member. And in user space, they were using an instance of this structure, of this now flexible structure. And they were declaring a couple of, uh, of objects in the middle of a user space uh, structure. So, so yeah, again, that's a bug. Uh, we fixed that by transforming those instances into pointers and, of course, refactoring the, the rest of the code in user space. But what that means is that that user space code uh, was buggy. So it needed to be fixed. And well, yeah, we've been um, helping to improve the security of the kernel. Now, what's next? OK. Now we want to replace declare flex array with declare bounce array. And what this does is that uh, instead of using, this is, this is the example, the, the UPI example that I, that I showed. Instead of using declare flex array, now we want to use declare bounded array. What we are doing is that now we are going to add in to this new helper uh, the member that is going to contain the total, the total items in our flexible array. In this case, is this, num source. That's, wha that's what's coming. Another thing that is that counted by can also be applied to pointers. So yeah, we are crazy enough to try to do that. So yeah, that's what we are going to try next. And of course, uh, this uh, experimental compiler option has proved to be useful. Um, again, it's going to be a lot of work. Uh, those uh, transformations are not going to be simple. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we, we, need to do, we need to do something about it. And chances are that the next great endeavor <laughs> is going to be uh, enabled, trying to enable this compiler option. And with that, thank you. We start. Um, not to me. Not all heroes are spotting a cap. So <laughs> a cape. So to me, uh, thanks for chasing all this stuff for us because it's such a an enormous work and it uh, should be a burden sometimes. So thank you for doing so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, yeah. Just, just before, just before, yeah. I have to say again that uh, this is the work of a bunch of people. Uh, not only Case and I uh, are involved in this. Uh, people from Oracle, people, uh, GCC developers, Clang developers. Uh, it's a multidisciplinary group, and that also adds to the challenge because it's not uh, simple to coordinate between all those uh, different uh, uh, profiles of people. As you showed, the warning can report a lot of false positives uh, due to a uh, struct of size zero being stuffed anywhere as marker or labels or whatever. Uh, why instead not have uh, an attribute on the struct to mention explicitly that it is flexible so that it cannot be included in another one without uh, triggering an error? For example, if you have an attribute uh, packed on can a structure... Can you speak louder, please? Sorry? Can you speak louder? Louder? Okay. Uh, if you had an attribute on the struct which uh, finishes by a flexible array, mm -hmm. uh, it would be easier for the compiler to refuse to include this struct into another one. Because th that's the difficulty you are facing right now. A, a struct with a flexible array can be included anywhere and it's very difficult to spot it. And uh, an attribute could help uh, for this. It would be uh, more uh, efficient and more robust uh, than this warning, which can trigger a lot of false positives. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, th there are different ways in which we can address these issues. Uh, and, yeah, the, the main concern are the false positives. Hmm? And yeah, yeah, you're right. If if you need to add an attribute, why don't you just remove the zero and make it an actual flexible array? Because it does not change the fact that uh, if you enable the warning, you get uh, 60,000 false positives. You see? That, that's the problem, in fact. We are, we are getting a lot of false positives with this warning. That's my understanding. So instead of using this warning, completely change the paradigm and say it's up to the developer who adds explicitly a flexible array at the end of a struct to just add uh, an attribute on the next line because it's uh, the closing brace of the struct, add an attribute there to say this is a flexible array, uh, this structure uh, ends like as a flexible array so that it cannot be included anywhere else. Well, what I, what I didn't mention here is that um, Together with the, with the F strict flex array, uh, the developers, the GC developers, and also client developers, they added an attribute uh, uh, that is named strict flex array. So that attribute can be used uh, to uh, to tag a fake flexible array mm -hmm. as a, as a true flexible array. But we don't want you to use them. Because that's the reason why I didn't mention that. But you made it. You made me do it. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, there is an option for that. When people uh, see, uh, don't want to, to get into, uh, into the trouble of uh, transforming their code, they can, they can try to use that, but we, I would discourage that. And uh, if, if you add that attribute, we are going to try to remove it. So. But, but, but it exists. In a way, you already mark the flexible array structures when you add uh, the counter, when you, when you use the club bounded, uh, bound array. At I the end, it's already a, a kind of a hint that this is a flexible array if you add uh, the, the counter hint. But I have a question um, with regards to the undefined behavior. Like, let's say you have 650 unique uh, uh, warnings for the flexible array, which is not at the end. Uh, um, how how does it work? What what what, do, what happens? Let's say when you build with GCC uh, with this undefined behavior, is it just for po false positives, or does it work in other cases, or or do we have memory of a flaws all, all over the place? I I have a review. Uh, I I have I have a review many of the cases to like. Uh, Try to uh, try to differentiate of the different types of warnings or the different types of issues that warning is uh, is uh, is reporting, right? Uh, but at least what we are trying to what we are going to uh, to try is to identify first those cases, those cases that are obviously wrong, 
And after that, we are going to get into the, into the trouble of, well, trying to determine or trying to classify the rest of the warnings into, well, the categories we, uh, we see fit. Uh, do you know if a check patch uh, helps educate developers about how to use flexible arrays correctly? Uh, yeah, check patch uh, recently was changed to detect uh, the introduction of new fake flexible arrays. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, wanted to thank you for this horrendous amount of work and also like tell a quick story. Uh, I was fixing. Um, fake like one element arrays and a couple Intel endurance drivers. And uh, uh, you mentioned that you need to like multiply size off of the element by count minus one, right? To get the true size. And uh, the developers, they like, it was hilarious because they um, didn't do minus one on the count, but from the like total size. And this element, it wasn't of like one, one byte. It wasn't like more. So it wasn't like count minus one. It was like size of uh, size minus one. Mm -hmm. So it was like even, even worse than both of cases. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, yeah, exactly. And we have run into, into a lot of those cases in which uh, we have the, well, people write this fake flexible structure and uh, with a one element array in the type of the, of the, the element type is of size one byte. And that's, that's even worse because now people can apply the size of to, uh, to, to the type of the fake flexible array. And instead of using count, a, a, a member uh, as a counter and, sub and subtracting one from that, they just subtract one from the whole thing. And that's obscure. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it also make sense to keep the static checking so the, the compile well, time check instead of replacing with the replacing it with the runtime check. So you have the object size and you have the dynamic object size, but the object size check is now gone. So all all the checking is done at runtime instead of compile time and runtime. It seems. The the question is uh, I, I didn't get the question. You, you're Why is the compile time check dropped from memcopy? At mem in memcopy you have the object size check that was removed and replaced by the dynamic object, object size check. No, but no, 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 the compile time, no, it's not, uh, it's not removed. Ah. No, we have, we have both. We, we have checks for both for compile okay. time and for runtime. How building object size works is that it, is repla it falls back to the behavior of building object size when it, when it cannot determine, uh, when it cannot give us a, a constant expression uh, that can be instrumented by the compiler and that can be sanity checked uh, at runtime. Okay. So yeah, we preserve the, the compile time in, in my copy. Yeah. Well, I want to first reiterate. Last, last question. Yeah. Yeah. At Juan's point, that it's great work. Very much appreciate it. Um, so this isn't like a leading question or a troll question. Uh, but there, there's um, FStack Protector Global, the FStack Protector config options, which enables the FStack Protector uh, GCC and Clang options, which check. The, uh, the, top and the, uh, the top of the stack frame essentially before you return. It's enabled by default. And we found at Meta that if we disable that, it got us like over 1% improvement for, for all of web globally. And so, you know, on the other side of the coin, obviously it's, imp it's very important to have this stuff, especially the runtime checks a lot of the time. But do you think we ever need to maybe revisit some of these decisions that were made to like enable security checks by default? Because we actually figured that out because we had a stack corruption issue, which, which Alexei debugged in BPF. And it didn't help us, you know. There, there were, uh, I think, two two loads in a uh, conditional branch and a write in every almost every frame in the kernel. Um, so there is a cost also sometimes to the to the security side of it. And I'm just curious to get your thoughts on on that. Yeah, you're right. I mean, um, I don't know. It's going to. I guess it it, it depends on the use case, right? But uh, at least in the case of uh, building object size, which is, let's say, the most significant change. That I am uh, that I am letting you know about. The, the, there is this CC, the, the, there is this CC, GCC developer. Uh, I don't quite remember his name, but he he ran a test. He noticed that at least in some libraries, the the coverage incremented. I think like a forty percent, with um, with a minimal impact in performance. 
So, um, well, and so that, that's what uh, that's what Keys's comment says as well in the commit message for when you enabled F Stack Protector Global. But it but it changes, right? And it depends on on uh, the use case. It depends on uh, on on how the, the 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 actual functions themselves can change, right? If you have like a local variable, now there's there's a maybe like you add the stack protection. So, yeah, sure, a, absolutely. I mean, I guess we we usually find out uh, the worst cases or, or problematic cases when when someone happened to run. A test, a test case that triggered that, right? But uh, yeah, until if we if we don't have those test results yet, or there is no people trying uh, all those different ways in which they can uh, make the performance to uh, either to, uh, to to increase dramatically or to stay the same, we are not going to be able to to determine what, what to do in those cases. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and we, we never emailed the list. We probably should have, so that's fair. Yeah, so maybe you, you reevaluate when, when somebody points out, hey, this, maybe we should think about this. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you.